Hello, hello. Craziness at my house tonight. I apologize for being a little bit late to our live chat date. Um, if you hear sounds in the background that sounds like an animal escaped from the zoo, that would be my three-year-old. And that is why I'm late. Uh, she needed some cuddles. We said she was going to be a monkey up in the treetop, falling asleep in her tree bed. Um, but then everything kind of went nuts um, <laughs> when, when I had to leave and come over here. So hopefully she will not be making an appearance. But hello, hello. Thank you for joining me tonight. I'm so excited to be doing this guest spot on your page. Hi, Kylie. I see you as my first joiner. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me. And I was... Um, chatting with Kylie and we decided to swap um, Facebook Live and um, visit each other's pages and you know give some some leadership leadership chatting to each other um, it's just kind of nice to have a fresh voice in a group and I am honored to be here super excited um, for those of you that don't know me I'm Morgan Crane and I live in Evanston Illinois which is just north of Chicago we share a border so I'm just over the border from Chicago. Um, we're right on the lake. It's a wonderful city. We've lived here for th four years, four years now. Um, and I am black status. I joined Unique in January of 2014. I hit black in September of 2014 and I've maintained it ever since. My team is the Fabulash Mavens. And um, yeah. We're kind of all over the country. I've got a big leg in the UK, um, and I just figured I'd take some suggestions last night, and um, some of the topics that came up over and over were how do you organize photos and videos. I I wasn't quite sure if that was like something that people just want to know in general, or if they, if they saw me and thought of that, like that I had some special system. I'll absolutely share my system. I even have a YouTube video on it, which is like really outdated, probably. But I could, I could share that too when we're done. Um, and then I wanted to talk about um, following up and increasing your average uh, sale. So, you know, get away from just the $29 mascara um, or whatever it is. You know, get your, your average purchase up more towards $100. And then um, networking and finding hostesses, finding new presenters, and how to kind of frame that in your head. So, um, if you have a question about something I'm saying, there's a little bit of a delay on the comments, but feel free to, to type it in and I will get to it when I can. And at the end of my you know topics, we can, we can chat about whatever. Um, if the three-year-old doesn't barge in, I've, I've got some time. So um, I have some coffee that I needed because I was falling asleep on the couch about half an hour ago. Okay, so organization of my photos and videos. Um, I, um, I try to be really organized with this because how many times have you just been scrolling through your phone and scrolling and scrolling, trying to find that one photo that you know you saved or you know you created or whatever, and there's just, you just can't find it anywhere. Um, so when I take a screenshot or, you know, download, save a photo from Facebook, um, this is on my phone, or if I create a graphic, as soon as I save it to my camera roll, I put it in a folder. So I have a foundation color matching folder. I have a you know new spring products folder. I have a motivation folder. Um, I have you know folders for all sorts of different things. I actually I share Kylie's before and after photo for the satin liquid foundation all the time because all these people think they can't wear satin and I'm like you can wear satin. Look at Kylie. <laughs> so Kylie, you are in my um, my foundation color matching. Um, my foundation color matching album. I have a, a thank yous album. I have all sorts of things. Um, if it's something that I realize that I'm using often, it will it will get its own special album. I also track my team sales every day. I take a screenshot of the My Royalties page. Um, I try to do it around the same time every day, and I have a folder for each month. So you know, right now I've got my April. Uh, my April 2016 folder, I take a screenshot every day and then I can look and I can see, you know, what is our average daily sales, you know, what day of the week is biggest for sales, where are my, you know, my elites tracking, 
Um, and then even more helpful, you know, this time next month, I can go back and say, okay, how is May comparing to April? Or, you know, six months from now, I can say, how is this month comparing to the last month? And I've got all the information right there. So I have albums for each month, and I have albums for each topic. And that's just on my, um, on my phone. And then on my computer, I also have folders for everything. So as soon as I, as soon as I download something, and my computer is a little bit more broken out, um, cause it's really easy to make folders and find things. Um, so and I'll, Mandy, I'll get to that about storage on your phone. I have a huge phone, so I keep almost everything. Um, but if you don't have a lot of storage on your phone, I can, I can give you some suggestions, um, with how to get, stay organized that way. Um, on my computer, I have a folder again for everything. So I've got a unique folder, a unique photos folder on my desktop within that I've got, um, you know, eye pigments, eye palettes, eye pencils, liquid pencils, um, you know, I have it broken down by each product, so if I'm like, okay, I need a picture of, of proper eyeliner um, liquid, you know, I know exactly where to find it. Um, and that way, it just is easy to stay organized. And I save a lot of stuff to my desktop, um, so I try once a week to go in and clean that up um, and either delete the things I don't need anymore um, or put it in a folder to use later. And um, this, okay, so if you're running out of storage on your computer or on your phone, the best, I don't want to say the best actually, there are several ways you can store photos that you can access them. Some people I know will um, create a Facebook group that is just them and, you know, I add my husband to mine because you need to have at least one other person in a group with you. Um, but some people have all of their photos in a private group that only they can see, and they have them in albums in their group. And so if they need, you know, a, a 3D, 3D Plus photo, they go to their group, they go to 3D Plus photos, and they have their stockpile of photos all stored on Facebook just for you. Um, I have also seen people use Dropbox, and you can just drag all your, all your photos into Dropbox, and they're saved there for you. With Dropbox, you know, you have to you have to have the app on your phone, but you can go into it and save it to your phone and then upload it. Um, and then also I use Google Drive, which is where I also store all like my PDFs. Um, so if I have like a worksheet, I have, I have a getting started worksheet for my new presenters. I have, um, you know, FAQs for the cruise and you know all the stuff that comes as a PDF that I don't want sitting in my computer I put it on Google Drive um, and I also just have been trying to free up space on my laptop because it was running slowly and has like a zillion photos on it so I just took my entire unique photos folder and just dragged it onto Google Drive and it just copied everything over so now I can access that on my phone or my computer so Google Drive, Dropbox, or um, or a, a private Facebook group just for you. Um, I think the Facebook one is probably easiest to access. The one downside of that is if for some reason your account gets a restriction put on it, Facebook jail, you won't be able to access any of your photos um, because they're you know because they they hide all your group group content while you're in jail. Um, but that is not something that happens very often. It's just something you have to be aware of. So lots of different ways to store, but I really recommend, um, you know, I really recommend having tasks to stay organized. Um, even if it's just like at some point this week, one time I'm going to go and I'm going to clean up my, my images, you know, I'm going to delete ones with old products on them or ones that, or for a kudos that's over or something, you know, just to just to get rid of the junk that's in there, so it's easier to find what you need when you need it. Um, if you're really organized and you can, if you're the type of person who can stick to a schedule, you know, you can say on Wednesday mornings at 10 o'clock, I do my photo storage management and I, you know, I go in and I clean stuff up. So <coughs> that's my best recommendations there. With videos. Um, I don't store a lot of videos. Um, I okay, my phone is huge. I've got like the 100, 164 gigabytes. It's the biggest iPhone that they make storage-wise. So I don't have to delete things. You know, I can save a you know a 30-minute Facebook Live onto my phone and upload it to YouTube later. Um, but once I've backed it up online and once it's been posted everywhere I want to post it, I don't usually keep my videos. Um, and I also don't 
usually edit my videos very much. Um, I know Kylie is like amazing at, you know, she did her like kidnapper video and you know, it's a lot of clips edited together, you know, lots of different filming and stuff. Like I see that and I'm like, I want to do that. And I'm like, that's, it's probably not going to happen. It just seems like a lot of work. <laughs> so I'm much more likely just to sit down in front of the camera, turn my lights on and just start talking. Um, so that's me but again different strokes for different folks like I love I love seeing all these videos that are really well produced that's just not in my wheelhouse I could I know I could figure out how to do it it's just a matter of time and how much how much time do I want to spend on editing and how um, how much value does it add to my video um, and I I'm at the point where I've just been doing my off-the-cuff videos forever even before um, even before Facebook live was around, you know, I would still just talk. Um, and I am kind of just, you know, that's, that's what my audience expects from me, I guess. Like if I put together like a really, you know, really edited video or I'm like talking to myself, like, I think they'd be like, whoa, what's she doing? You know, it'd be interested, but that's not like how I've branded myself, I guess. Um, so party videos. Yes. I would store those on my phone. I would make room. If you have, if you don't have much storage, I would clear everything else off and keep your party videos on your phone um, because we all know they're going to get the most exposure if they're directly uploaded to Facebook. However, I would also have every party video backed up onto YouTube in advance because I've heard several several times, you know, Facebook Facebook will get stalled in an upload. You know, it'll take like an hour to upload a, a two minute video for, for no reason at all. Um, and your guests are not going to wait an hour to see your video. So if something is going on where your videos are not going up as fast as they should be, you want them backed up on YouTube. So you can say, hey, like Facebook is being glitchy. Here's my video. And it might not have the reach that an organically uploaded video has, but it's, at least it's there. You know, you don't want to be stuck with no access to your videos. So yeah, if you're going to keep anything on your phone, keep your videos for your parties on your phone, but then you can, you can clear them off, you know, when the party's over and, and just have them backed up somewhere. If you're using the same videos for, for more than one party. All right. Any other questions about photo and video storage before I move on? The lights are a little bit too bright here. got my that's better <laughs> I had something on my phone and I was like is there something on my face or something on my phone I don't even know okay so I'm gonna move on to um, what did I say I was gonna talk about next um, following up and increasing average party sales what app do I use if I use an app at all I use Viva, Viva video pro I paid like the five bucks to get the logo off of it um, and I use iMovie um, I like iMovie better on my computer because I feel like it's easier to edit and I have more options, but iMovie on your phone is also really good. I know some people use it exclusively. Um, I just feel like I can do more with the computer, but then if I'm like sitting down and doing it on the computer, I like totally overdo it and I kind of over edit, I think. So, um, Viva Video or iMovie is what I would recommend. To people who want to do, you know, subtitles or captions or you know, stitching, stitching videos together. Yeah, Kylie can. Kylie should do an iMovie tutorial. That would be fun. Um, okay, so follow up and increasing your average sale. So, how many of you have heard the phrase "the fortune is in the follow up"? I feel like that's. I feel like you can't make go like a day, <laughs> go a day without hearing that or something like that in a network marketing business. If if you're paying attention to the right things. It's true. Um, when I started, I was afraid to follow up with my customers because I didn't know what they were going to say and I didn't, um, I like wasn't emotionally equipped to handle rejection. Like I'm just going to be totally honest with you. I didn't want to hear that they didn't like it because I didn't know what to say. I didn't know how to like problem solve. I didn't, so I was just scared. I was scared to say anything. Um, I was scared to say anything to follow up. But as a result, 
I had like my my first month in business I sold forty five hundred dollars something like that um, but I didn't have very many repeat customers because I was afraid to follow up how ridiculous is that like looking back that was like a gold mine that I just walked away from just like a pile of money that I was just like nope I'm afraid to talk to you so um, yeah I just didn't I didn't want to hear that somebody didn't like the thing that I was like so obsessed with so um, I try to teach and coach um, that follow-up is one of the most important things in our business especially because um, women if they don't like okay how, raise your hand if you've ever bought something not liked it but didn't actually return it or say anything you know the pile of stuff I have from Amazon that I bought and never returned because I like kind of forgot about it or I kind of it, Amazon's like super easy to return and I still didn't do it I still didn't do anything I just bought it didn't like it and I was like oh well you know <laughs> so that's that's what a lot of people do and so there might be customers out there who have tried it and didn't didn't like it or didn't um, and lots of times they're not applying it correctly and they just don't know they have no idea and so when you follow up which you need to be doing you know first thanking them for the sale within 24 hours so you know thanks for your order it's you know you're gonna get an email when it ships I'm so excited for you to try this product and then after they've had the product for a couple days you come in and you say hey I want to see I wanted to check in with you and see how you're loving your new foundation um, and when you check in with you know and always using language that's positive see how you're loving it and then give them a tip I found that when I use liquid foundation I get the best application when I blank for me I would say when I put it on the back of my hand and when I dip my brush and apply it that way you know give them a tip on how to apply without sounding salesy or sounding condescending just say like hey I just wanted to see how you're loving your new foundation um, you know, I'm totally obsessed I found that when I apply this I do it this way and I get the best results um, and just leave it at, at that and they can get back to you um, because then you open the door for them to say I don't get it it smells weird it's not covering like I thought it would um, where they never would have come to you and told you that if you hadn't opened the door for them to talk and you know even if you're brand new you know say you get an email back from your customer saying it doesn't cover how I thought it would and you're like what do I say I don't know you know that's when you go to your sponsor your upline elite or your your black upline and say I need help answering this question I want to give amazing customer service to my to my customer um, I want to help her to love this product as much as I thought she was going to when she ordered it so that's how you you know you build that rapport and it's okay if your customer isn't happy especially like I have customers who ordered the blush brush um, back when the puff brush was out of stock and for whatever reason the blush brush is shedding bristles everywhere guess how many of them told me that before I asked them how they liked it zero but as soon as I opened the door they said actually this brush is kind of shedding all over my face and I said oh did you try XYZ blah 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 they're like yeah I'll go try it nope it still doesn't work and I said okay I'll get you a new one love it guarantee I'm gonna get you a new brush so follow-up is opening up that door and then you have a relationship that goes beyond just I chose you to buy from because that's not enough of a relationship to get people coming back to you um, you need a rapport and you need them to see you as someone who is helpful who is invested who is interested in them as a you know as a person they want to make sure that they love the products um, and then okay so this is like after the initial do you like it you know offering a tip on how to use it um, then on the next round of follow-up is when I will share the opportunity have you ever thought of becoming a unique presenter like so, you know glad we figured this out um, blah 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 have you ever thought of becoming a unique presenter I don't say like at unique we have this comp plan we can make money from home you know I don't do I don't do a spiel I that's how I present the opportunity have you ever thought about it and if they hadn't thought of, haven't been thinking about it they're thinking about it now um, 
and I don't know if you guys have heard the model of rolling down the hill. So women are not inclined to say no to the same person more than two times in a row. That's like a psychological study that's been done. So when you're starting a conversation or when you're continuing a conversation with somebody that you find to be a valuable person to talk to, you lead with the opportunity. Have you ever thought of becoming a unique presenter? No, not really. It's not for me. Okay, so roll down and then you go um, to the hostess opportunity. Um, when you're doing the hostess opportunity, A, don't say, a, don't say hostess because people are like, ooh, no, what do I have to do? Um, hi, Carrie. <laughs> um, instead of saying hostess, you can say, you know, would you like to do a makeup class with me? Um, would, you know, you have your friends join us online. I'll share some techniques and share, you know, some new looks for spring. Um, do you want to get some friends together and do an online makeup class with me or an online tanning, you know, faux tan class? How do you, how do you get a perfect fake tan? You know, whatever it is presented as an opportunity to learn and not a, do you want to host a party for me? Cause that's like super icky. But when you're, ho when, um, you're presenting the host's opportunity, that's when you're also, following up and recommending um, complimentary products that you know she would love. So for example, if she bought the liquid foundation and the blush brush, so she has those two, um, and she loves them and they're great and you, she's, she's into unique now, she likes it. Um, this is the opportunity to recommend the liquid concealer and the body bronzer and the, you know, whatever it is, Take a minute to look at how she does her makeup. Um, you know, look, is she into lips? Is she into eyes? Is she in, is, do her brows need help? Do her brows look awesome? You know, look at what you think she might actually use. Take some time and provide great customer service and make your product recommendations based on what she already has. What would help those products to work even better? So say she bought the foundation on the brush, but she doesn't have primer or concealer. That would be the next step. Um, say the color, hopefully this won't happen anymore, but you know, say her, her color of um, foundation is out of stock, then you can offer the BB cream, you know, but don't just say like, everyone needs extravagant cream shadow and a brush, you know, that doesn't sound genuine. You can tell when someone's talking to you and has done the research and has, um, you know, is talking to you and not just saying, there's a kudos this month, everyone should buy it, you know. Sorry, I don't know why I'm doing the robot thing three times in a row. I'm going to stop that now. But, presenter opportunity. She says no. Host is opportunity. Um, with the recommendations for products, or which is really makeup class opportunity. Say she says don't, excuse me, say she says no to that as well. So she's already said no to you twice. But she has those product recommendations in her head. And the reason you're recommending the products then is you can see you can get them for free because of your party or your makeup class. And say she says no to that. Then um, she's already said no twice. So whatever you ask her next, she's probably going to say yes to. <laughs> so that's just how it works. That's how brains work. You know, she'll feel... Now, you don't want to make anybody feel guilty for saying no to you, but that's just how women work. They're like, oh gosh, I've just been saying no, no, no to this person. Um, you know, I'm just going to buy those those products that she said that I'm going to like because I, I trust her and I believe her that I'm going to like them. Um, or you also use that opportunity to ask for a referral. Um, which of your friends do you think would love this foundation as much as you do? Always ask for a referral because if somebody loves your stuff, Chances are they know somebody else who's going to love it too. Um, and you can also ask for the referral for the business opportunity. Um, who in your life, you know, could use a little, little bit of a side income working from home? Do you know anybody who, you know, who's a new mom or who's in between jobs or whatever it is? And people start thinking, they're like, oh yeah, you know, my, my old coworker or my brother's you know, my brother's wife, I don't know, whatever. People know people once they think about it. So use that conversation to ask for referrals, ask for the, to them to host a makeup class, um, ask for them to become a presenter, but always, you know, start with the big guns and that's the one like they're most likely to say no to anyhow, but at least that, that seed is then planted. Have you ever thought about becoming a unique presenter? 
and they're starting to think about it. So even if they say no right now, um, you know, they're more likely to say yes to doing a make makeup class with you. Um, during that makeup class, you can convert them into a presenter when they see how much their network is enjoying it and having fun and how easy it is. Um, and, you know, use that opportunity to get referrals. So that is my follow-up um, and increasing your average sales. Because once you get them hooked on, I don't want to say hooked on more products, but, you know, once they experience more products, their reorders are going to be more. They're going to recommend the whole look to their friends. Um, you know, they're going to say, I use this, this, and this from Unique. You, you should get it too. And it just um, also makes you look like a product expert. Um, Kayla, I do not have a referral program. I, I kind of operate on word of mouth. Um, but no, I don't have, I've, I've heard of that, like a rewards program or, you know, buy seven mascaras and get one for free or whatever. But no, my, my repeat clients and are the ones who are most likely to give me referrals anyhow. Um, and they're kind of, you know, they're, they're kind of lifers. They, they know they love the makeup and they're always wanting to try new things. So I haven't really had to, um, if anything, I would maybe enter them into like a mystery hostess drawing or something. You know, if you if you send a ref, you know if you if you refer somebody who buys or if you refer somebody who becomes a presenter, um, you know, you get an automatic entry into my next hostess or a mystery hostess party, which you only do in secret groups and never talk about anywhere else. At all. All right, and then. That kind of leads into what I was going to say about networking. Just that everybody, everybody you come across is a potential presenter, potential hostess, potential customer, or potential referral. So if you get through all those no's and they're like, no, 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 I don't want anything to do with you, then you say, do you know anybody who, who does want anything to do with me? <laughs> so that's where you get your referrals. Um, and, you know, I don't want anyone to feel like they're, like, you know, looking at every relationship as, like, a tool or a vehicle. Um, you know, that's not the only way to look at somebody, but everybody is. You know, everybody that you know um, has the opportunity to, be, to play that, that part in your business. So that is, you know, just don't, um, don't forget to utilize your relationships. Um... Everybody knows somebody who could be who could benefit from our opportunity. And when you are presenting that opportunity, you make it about them. It's not about me. It's not about joining my team. It's not about um, my company or my anything. It's about your business, your life, your opportunity to earn extra money for your family. How could Unique change your life? It's not about me. I don't recruit. Um... I offer the opportunity to be a part of something that can really change a person's life. So when you think about it that way, um, and not, are you going to do this with me, 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 just try to take the word me out of it, make it about you, or you, them, whatever. Um, okay, I need to watch more Mystery Hostess tutorials, mock parties. So Mystery Horse Hostess... Um, I, that's not my thing, but I have some people on my team who are really successful with them where the draw is, you know, if you participate, um, you have an opportunity to, to win all the hostess rewards and then you've got all that money to spend on this, on the website. So that is a draw for people. Some people totally rock it. Um, it's an option. It's not the only way to do things. One of the coolest part about our company is that there's so many different ways to be successful. Some people never do online parties ever. There's black status leaders who've never done an online party, a traditional 10 day online party. Um, sorry, I have a cat joining me. Um, you know, some people do entirely in person, um, events, home parties, one-on-ones, one-on-ones where I'm actually sitting in the same room as the person and they're touching the makeup and trying it on and I'm showing them how to do it. Those are my biggest sales, hands down. Um, if you are not local to your clientele, I also do, I also offer virtual makeovers, I call them. So I will look at, you know, look at their photos, ask them what kind of look they're going for. They want something they can wear every day. Um, how often do you want to switch it up? Um, and then, you know, I can color match them. I can recommend products that 
are going to be good for someone who's like just starting to wear makeup for the first time or somebody who's super into makeup and just wants more fun you know fun things to do but you can make you know I don't and some people do like a whole like um, graphic with the swatches of all the colors I'm just not that organized with my graphics um, so I just say like actually what I do is I make a video for them um, I make a video and I say you know these are the colors that I recommend for you this is well to do you know it's our lightest shade it's a nude um, this is gonna look great with the lip stain you know that I recommend for you and I make them a little video and kind of pretend like we're sitting across the table from each other and I show them all the recommendations and that's been really successful for me okay um do 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 I don't do 10 day parties anymore and I will tell you why is it a bad idea Okay, I'm going to do Brooke first because this it's more urgent. She asked if it's, is it acceptable to send a Facebook message at 10 p.m. I would say absolutely. It's their, their choice if they want to open it or not. <laughs> so um, it's not like a phone call to the house. I would say I wouldn't, you know, be messaging people at 1 in the morning with your follow-up. Um, but, you know, this is a, a time of night where people have, you know, just gotten their kids to bed and they're kind of unwinding. I'd say I'd, I'd probably cut, off, cut that off around 11. Um, but, you know, do your East Coast people first and then move on to the other time zones um, where it's earlier. Um, I personally would not run a contest to have people add their friends to a group um, for the exact reason that you just said, uh, in that people don't like being added to groups without asking. Um, people don't like being, you know, saying, what is this group and why am I in it? I would rather have a group of 75 women, 50 women, 30 women, who are totally into the products and invested and want to be there and have asked to be there, um, then I would would like to have a group of 5,000 women who are just added by their friends. Those people are not paying attention to your group. They are not going to all of a sudden see your post in their newsfeed and be like, oh, yeah, definitely. So I would rather have people in my group, especially like a VIP group. Um, VIP groups should be all former customers and people who have come to you and asked to be part of it. Um, I don't, it, it, it can look spammy and unprofessional to just, to have people add to your group. Um, Carrie, I will say a year ago or even, you know, two years ago, we totally did that. We all did that. And it kind of backfired on us and Unique got a bad reputation for just, you know, adding you to the group without asking and all of a sudden I'm in 15 mascara parties and I'm like, ew, I don't want your mascara. And, and then we're like, that is not what we intended with any of this. So we've kind of tried to revamp our, our training on that. Um, if there's people in your VIP group, you don't have to delete them, but I would pay attention to who's interacting um, in your group. I've deleted a bunch of people out of my VIP group that just never, never interacted. Um, it's, it's better to have a smaller group of engaged people because they're going to be the ones who want to learn about the new products. They're the ones who, um, <coughs> excuse me, you know, who are going to be following your journey and really being, um, really be invested, I guess. Um, yeah, Carrie, I would not do that. I would, you know, keep networking and, you know, keep putting out everything that you've got and see who's interested and ask your friends for referrals. Um, so instead of saying, you know, add five people that you think would like my group, message your friend and say, um, you know, thanks so much for supporting me in my group. Um, I'm really trying to grow a community of women who um, are into confident beauty and, you know, do you have anybody in your life that you think would be into it? Because if so, I'd love to have them as a part of our, our community. And when you put it that way, instead of just like, this is, this is the group where I sell stuff, it's a totally different culture and mindset, um, and people are going to feel differently about being in your group. Um, there was one more question. Oh, okay. Um, Denise said, I found that people stop following a party around day five. Do you have a five-day party? Since we can now, we can close our parties whenever we want. So, um, 
you can do a half hour party that's only open for a half hour and you can close it. You can do a 10 day party or anything in between. So if you are seeing that your audience is checking out after day five, I would absolutely stick to a three or five day format. Um, the nice part about being able to cl manually close parties is that you can say it's a three day party and then you can say, oh, you know, I'm just going to leave it open for two more days, be you know, for um, everybody who is waiting to get paid on Friday or whatever it is. You know, you can you can offer to leave it open a little bit longer and it looks like you're doing them a favor by giving them some extra time to order. But um, say you have a three day party and you're really pushing that it's three days, you need to get your, your orders in. The most, most of your orders will come in on what they think is the last day. And then you can offer to keep it open a little bit longer um, if, if you think that it'll help or if your hostess needs some more time to connect with people or whatever. But um, I, I don't wanna say 10 day parties are over. There's definitely people who are still successful with them, but I think it is too long to uh, expect people to pay attention. Um, okay. Once you have a referral, what do you do? Okay, Valerie says, once you have a referral, what do you do? Do you message them or let them come to you? It, okay. So say I was talking to Kylie and I said, Kylie, do you know anyone who do you think could, could benefit from a work at home opportunity? Um, just to, you know, earn a side income or someone who really loves makeup or um, somebody who you think might be interested. She's like, oh yeah, my sister. I was like, okay. So I would, I would have Kylie make the introduction if possible. If not possible, I would um, ask for the contact information and reach out myself. So, um, you know, if Kylie was able to introduce me and say, this is my friend Morgan, um, she's the one I told you about, she's got the amazing 3D fiber lashes, blah, blah, blah. Um, if you can have, if you can have that introduction, the person is like more likely to talk to you. You know, say your friend introduced you to another friend who had something that they thought would interest you. Well, then you're going to pay attention because your friend was thinking of you. You know, your friend was interested. You're going to be interested in, in what the person has to say. Um, if I did not have the opportunity for Kylie to introduce me to her sister, but I had her contact information, I would contact her and I would say, hey, I'm Kylie's friend Morgan. I, um, you know, I was talking to Kylie yesterday and she said that you might be interested in blah, 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 blah. So it just depends on the situation. Um, I don't... I don't do you know the same message to several people. I always try to be really personal with my messages because um, that's how you build relationships and relationships are the name of the game. That's absolutely the name of the game. Without relationships, you don't have longevity and you're not gonna have the people who keep coming back because uh, people come back to the people that they feel connected to. Okay. Um, Ruby says, I'm wanting to do follow-ups with people who commented and shown interest in products but have not ordered and the party ends tomorrow. I don't know how to do it and not to sound pushy. Sorry, there's a see more button. Um, Ruby, is this a hostess party? Is this, like, do you have a hostess or, excuse me, is this your launch party or, you know, are you the hostess? Because that makes a difference. And you're welcome, Valerie. This is fun. This is like quiz show has a hostess. Okay. Is, and the, then the party ends tomorrow night. I would definitely engage your hostess, um, and have, give her, you know, kind of an idea of what to say. And I would say, okay, you know, Huey, Dewey, Louie, Donald, and Daffy are all liking your, all these posts. Um, but I haven't, you know, they haven't been commenting and I haven't seen anybody order. Um, they're liking the posts about the mascara, the lip stains, and the foundation. Um, can you message them and say, Hey, you know, I saw you over in my party. Did you have any questions about the mascara or whatever, you know, the things that they're liking, I'm trying to engage in the conversation. Um, so I've had follow up during a party for other, um, like, you know, Usborne books, um, Chloe and Isabel. I've had really good mid party follow up and I've had really like pushy mid party follow up. And the pushy one was like, I see you, I see you in the event, you know, liking, don't forget to buy some books to support Megan's party. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to go, I'm not going back. 
I'm not, I'm never going back to that party. I don't want anything to do with that party anymore because you just reached, reached out to me and told me to buy so my friend can get free stuff. Um, you know, as much as I want my friends to have free stuff, that's not the way to do it. So, um, then I have another follow up mid party and say, Hey, um, I, you know, I noticed you liked the post with the birthstone earrings or whatever. You know, I know you've got your three kids. Um, when are their birthdays again? I can help you pick out, I can help you pick out the right stones or whatever. Um, and that way it's, it's more personal. It's not like, I see you, I see you. It's not, I see you in my party, go buy something. It's, you know, did you have any questions about the foundation? I have an application video I can show you if you want to kind of see how it works and how it goes on. Or, you know, just that is opening up a conversation. Does that help? I hope. Props to anybody who's been hanging out with me for 40 minutes. This is fun. Okay. I can hang out for a little while with any more just like random Q&A if you want. I'm getting all hot. A fun little game of I Spy. If you're looking at selfies or videos from uh, Black Status Leaders, look for these hoodies. There's purple and there's black, and you're going to see them everywhere once you start noticing them. Because <laughs> we all wear them, like, all the time. Um, so definitely look for the hoodies. Good. I'm glad it's helping you. This is fun. Tips for getting hostesses is just asking, doing that follow-up, like I said, following up and asking everybody. Um, a lot of people are going to say no, or, or not right now, or, you know, maybe closer to the holidays is something I hear a lot. Um, I'm all stocked up on makeup, um, maybe some other time. And when hostesses are, you know, when it's slow, I guess, that's when you do a mystery hostess. That's when you try to book a home party, an in-person event, um, anything just to mix it up a little bit. Don't get too reliant upon the online parties. Um, so, Brooke, I'll, I'm going to get to you in just a second. Um, yeah, but don't get too reliant on these online parties and don't get yourself in a rut of doing them the same way every time or doing them the same way as somebody that you admire that you've been watching. Um, so, sorry, now I'm reading. Okay. Um, one of the things that I've been recommending to my leaders and my up and coming leaders is make sure that you have at least eight, eight things booked per month, whether it's eight online parties, whether it's eight one-on-one -on -one consultations, whether it's eight in-person events, um, eight flash sales, which doesn't make any sense. Um, but ideally a mix of them. So you're, you're not just a one trick pony. So say, you know, you've got, um, and that, re that really results about two a week. So on Monday, you're doing a power hour. On Thursday, you're doing a one-on-one -on -one consultation with your hairdresser. Um, the next week, you're doing um, a mom's group. You know, you're bringing all your stuff to your mom's group and you're showing them um, how to put on makeup, whatever. But try to mix it up so you're meeting different people, meeting different types of people. And so even if you don't have um, a lot of people willing to host for you, you will still be interacting with a lot of people. Because hostess parties are really to just get it, be, I mean, they're to make money, but to be exposed to new people and introduce the opportunity to people. Um, okay, hold on. All right, so Brooke says, I hate online parties. I hate that I hate them. <laughs> But I find that humor is a strong suit in them. Any other pointers to spark interaction? Um, the biggest thing to spark interaction is just be yourself. People can tell if you're trying to, like, be something that you're not. So if you're funny, be funny. If you are a makeup expert, be a makeup expert. If you are a makeup beginner, be a makeup beginner. Be honest. I don't do makeup, but I've been working really hard and I've been practicing and I figured out how to do an eye look without looking like I got punched in the face. That was one of my videos that I did <laughs> over the winter. How to do a smoky eye without looking like you got punched in the face. You got a lot of interaction. <laughs> um, but be honest. Don't try to be something that you're not. I don't do like party games. Um, I want the people who are there to want to be there. So I try to, you know, 
try to pump it up beforehand. Try to let them know that I'm not going to take a bunch of their time. I'm not going to be annoying. Um, if you don't know Kara Lewis Newton, um, follow her, find her on YouTube, and kind of look at how she does things. She does 10 day parties. She does almost all videos, but she sets the stage very well. And I'm not going to try to sell you stuff. I'm going to show you how to use these products. I'm going to try to be fun. I'm going to try to make sure you learn something. And I'm not going to be creepy. Don't be creepy. So if you're, if that's your approach, people can be more receptive. They're not just like, what is she trying to sell me? Um, that goes with sharing, not selling. So, but always, always be yourself. Um, Valerie has never done anything besides a flash sale. I'm not sure what else to do to get sales. Valerie, you need to start talking to a lot more people. A lot. As many, like, talk to every single person you can think of because I hope, I hope that, um, when you say flash sale, you're not saying that you're discounting everything that you're selling. Um, because I'm not entirely sure what, flash sale can mean different things to different people. Some people do a flash sale and like give a percentage off of everything. I never do that. I don't discount my products. I'm not going to cut into my own commission. Um, you shouldn't have to do that to get sales. If you feel like you do, then you need to build up your network by talking and talking and talking to people. Get more, get in front of more people and you will get more clients. Um, when you reach out to new people and they show interest and they say, tell me more, how do you go about it? Party or recruit? I always start with the presenter opportunity. And then if they're like, no, that's not really what I was talking about, then you talk about hosting. If you go from hosting and they say yes, then you're not going to be like, well, do you want to just be a presenter? Um, it's easier to start big and then roll down. Um, I talked about that a little bit earlier. Um, so I would talk about telling them what you do. You know, if they say, oh, I want to hear more, I'll be like, oh, super fun. I talk to women. I talk to strangers online. No. Um, I, you know, just tell them what you do and why you love it. And then they, um, you know, hearing your passion and your excitement about it, that'll make them even more interested. And then, um, you know, you say, I think, you know, I think you actually really love it and you get a ton of makeup to get started. And, you know, I would be your, your mentor and we could, you know, do it together whatever. And then if they're like, no, it's not what I was talking about. And you're like, well, you know, you can get all this stuff for free. And people are like, what? And then you talk about the hostess opportunity. But I would, um, I would start with sponsoring. Um, Sandra asked, do I do a hostess coaching video for when they agree to do a party? I do not have a hostess coaching video. I'm going to be totally honest with you guys. I don't do a ton of online parties anymore. When I do them, um, I am able to usually talk to the hostess one-on-one -on -one and do that hostess coaching in person. Um, if I was still, I did do a ton of online parties. Um, I used to do like seven to 15 a month. I was constantly doing, ho doing hostess parties and that was kind of pre video days. Um, so in that, in that time I had like a, a document and a graphic that I would share with them with like expectations and tips. Um, and I would also talk to them about it, but I think a hostess coaching video is, um, is helpful, but if you would like to do FaceTime with them or even a phone call or something that's more personal than that, that would be great. But if you're like super busy and you have a million hostesses, then a standardized video would be a great idea. Um, okay. I think I caught up. Does anybody else have any, any questions? Should have grabbed water not coffee okay Carrie says people want samples I don't do samples I do the love a guarantee so um, if someone's not local to me and almost none of my customers are I have a couple like it's taken me two years to find some local customers by and large my my customers are not anywhere near me and so um, when they say you know I, I don't know if it's gonna be the right color I don't know if I'm gonna like it and I say, that's fine. Um, you know, we have the most amazing guarantee that if you don't love it, you can return it for a full refund within 14 days. I don't lead with the guarantee, but if they're like really hesitant, um, I have not, I can't remember the last time I sent out samples. Um, and you know, samples also are not going to perform the same way as a full size product just because they've already been exposed to air and they're not in the, in the intended container or anything like that. I've never had someone say, 
I've never had someone stick to, I'm not going to buy it because you're not going to send me a sample. It's kind of more like a test, I guess. Like, yeah, if I can get someone to send me a sample, sure, absolutely. I will, I will get you to send me a sample. Um, I will push you and, and try to get you to say yes. But um, if you just say, you know what, that's not something that we do because we have, we don't need to do it because we have such an amazing love it guarantee. And I can personally say in my two year, two plus years of doing this, I've had maybe four returns ever, ever of any product. Um, even with following up and even if they didn't like it, I've been able to exchange for a new version of the same product, exchange for a different product that I thought they would like. Um, I've had very few people be like, I don't like this. I'm going to return it. So Kylie says, I don't do samples either. I think about the times when I get a free sample. I just wanted to get something free. Yep. <laughs> That's pretty much it. People are like, yeah, why not? Free? Sounds good. And the people who take your samples are likely not going to buy from you. Um, and I've actually heard of a lot of situations where people are reaching out to multiple presenters and saying, do you have samples? Can I get samples? Um, and, you know, it can, it can... When you're new and someone says, I'm interested in you, I want to buy what you have, but I want to, you know, I want to try it first. I want to, like, you get in this mindset of, like, they're so close. They might buy. They might buy if I do this. You know, so you want to please them. You want to help them. You want to make them your, like you, make them your customer. That's totally normal. But just be confident and that you don't have to reduce your prices. You don't have to send samples. You know, we've got a really great system going on and you are worth what you are paid for these products. You're worth more than what you're paid for these products. Um, so, you know, I've had people be like, well, I know that you, you know, you only pay this for this, whatever. Like you get a discount because you're a presenter. I'm like, yeah, you want to become a presenter? Then you can get a discount too. <laughs> but yeah, I don't discount my products. I don't send samples. Okay. Do you ever do one-on-ones and what do I do about hygiene? Okay. I do do one-on-ones and they're super fun and what I've been doing which has been actually really increased my brush sales is I say um, I have them bring their own brushes bring clean brushes or like have have your makeup brushes ready I recommend you know washing them and I'll tell them how to do it um, I actually now have like a, wa a brush washer machine too that I can bring and wash their brushes for them but most of the time, they go and they look at their brushes and they're like, my brushes are total garbage. They're from when I was, you know, 19 and from Kmart or whatever, and they notice that their brushes suck. Um, so that gets them interested in, in my brushes right away. Um, and one of the first things that I bought with my Hostess Rewards, actually with my Fast Start bonus, I bought a complete brush set that I use just... Um, for demonstration purposes. I have my set of brushes that I use for personal use and I have my set of brushes that I use at shows um, for one-on-ones. I've added to it now. I've got a couple different um, like foundation brushes so I can use more than one color and stuff. Um, and if I need to clean them, if it's one-on-one, -on -one, I you only need one set of brushes usually for an event or something like that. Um, I usually like wipe them on a baby wipe. There's alcohol spray you can use. Um, I'm not super worried about it. No one's ever been like, ew, I'm not going to use that brush. Um, I also can bring Q-tips, uh, disposable lip applicators, that kind of thing. Um, but investing in a complete brush set with your hostess rewards or your fast start bonus is super good investment because when people can see all the brushes and what they do, um, you know, it really helps them decide what they want. And yeah. My home party presentation. Bring all my stuff and lay it on a table. <laughs> I don't, I am pretty down to earth. I'm not a fancy person, not super girly. Um, so I will bring like, you know, the biggest platter that I have from my house and I'll put all the shadows on it or whatever. Whenever I've done in-person events, I actually usually borrow my setup. Um, not home parties, but actual like vendor events. I usually borrow my setup from um, from a teammate who does them a lot. So she's got a lot of, you know, she's got a nice tablecloth and she's got fore and after photos and frames and um, all the stuff that I would invest in if I was going to do that often. But I only do like three or four of those a year. So it doesn't make sense for me to spend money on that um, when I could just share it 
with somebody else. So I don't have like a good answer for home party presentation, but you don't have to have like anything fancy. You can come over with your, with your kit, your presenter kit and open it up and say, Hey, I have one of each of these colors of these things. Um, let's play with this. I want to hear what you think. Let's see if we can do our makeup without looking like we got punched in the face. You know, do be you and you don't have to have every color. You don't have to have every product, but work what you've got. There's a reason that we give so many different products in the presenter kit. It's so that you can learn about as many different products as you can, um, right away. And so you can say, well, yeah, I tried, I tried this one thing and I, and this one color and I kind of like it and maybe I want to try more colors than that, but enough that you can, um, talk about these things and even, you know, you don't have to pretend like you know everything. Your people, your audience will appreciate authenticity. So I don't have a big home party set up. When I got started, I literally just would bring my kid around and open it up and say, let's play with all this stuff. All right. Anybody else? Three home parties. I love them. I feel like my presentation needs work as in what do I present? Um, so again, I'm not like a huge home party person, but, um, everything that I have heard, um, good night, Carrie. Um, it can help if you have like a specific thing that you're talking about, like self tanners or, um, a five minute face, you know, if it's a bunch of moms, um, you know, five minute face, get out the door. Um, or you can do a lips party or a, um, a skincare party, um, if you go to, I think it's got to be on YouTube, go to YouTube, search, search Sherry Brown Upsell Hotel. She has a whole video on upselling products, um, introducing things at home parties in a way um, that makes sense and is going to kind of build on each other. Um, you know, don't lead with the lowest priced um Race products, everything like that. So, okay, Ruby knows what I'm talking about. Um, Tamara, I did talk about how to get hostesses, so you're going to have to watch the replay. Um, and, yeah, Upsell Hotel, and that is a great format for home parties. Anything in person, and even, like, if you think about how you approach things online. Um, you don't leave with the best seller. If you only want to sell 10 mascaras to 10 people at a home party, then leave with the mascara. But... If you want to get people interested in all the products, um, you know, you start with skincare and then primer and then, you know, build a whole look and then they can see all the products on the way and then decide what is, what is most interesting to them. Um, because if you leave with the mascara, what are the chances they're going to buy a primer and an eye palette? They're not. <laughs> so, all right, cool. All right, ladies, uh, it's almost an hour. No one needs to listen to me for more than an hour. So thank you so much for having me. This was super fun. This, like, it gets the wheels turning, and I love um, I love talking to people. I love helping people. I love sharing um, what I've learned and being able to pass it along to people. So thank you so much for having me, and have a wonderful night. And thanks to Kylie.